It's Michael, KB9VBR here, getting ready to uh, take part in the state of Wisconsin annual tornado simulated tornado drill to see how one of these uh, drill nets work. Stay tuned. All right, our um, drill net's going to be starting in a couple minutes here. So before that begins, I just want to kind of take you through uh, some of the things you see uh, going on down here in the shack. Uh, number one, uh, most important device for our net control station, of course, a radio. Dual band radio, uh, one side's going to be listening to the VHF net control frequency, and the other side is a UHF uh, for the liaison frequency. Got a couple of computers here. Uh, number one is, um, we'll use that for our logging software. We just use a spreadsheet running a Google Docs document that we can share with uh, the other backup net control stations or the liaison station. Uh, it's a great, uh, great tool for keeping everybody on, on the same page, uh, figuratively speaking. And then also behind me is another computer running uh, the radar application. It pulls in images from the National Weather Service Doppler radar so we can see in near real time um, the storm's progression and um, where we need to put spotters so that they can uh, see the information that we require and also stay safe at the same time. I must stress that safety is very important uh, when, you're being, when you're a net control operator. Safety for yourself, safety for uh, your spotters in the field. So good situational awareness and uh, be able to pull that information from the weather service is invaluable in, in, that, in that safety realm. And then also just some other minor things. Uh, we've got pen and paper, notepads, um, net control scripts, telephone so we can contact the weather service if we need to over a landline or of course uh, our emergency manager if he needs a heads up on anything that's going on. So a lot of things that are be happening here um, in a moment I'll we'll just change camera angles so you can kind of get a, a view over the shoulder as we run the net. Good afternoon, this is Michael, KB9VBR Net Control for Marathon County Skywarn for the uh, simulated tornado drill net as part of uh, Wisconsin Severe Weather Awareness Week. Uh, this is a directed net to test uh, their capabilities as a Skywarn Severe Weather Spotters uh, will be taking check-ins momentarily for the net. Uh, when you do check into the net, please give uh, your call sign, your location, and if, if you are portable, mobile, or fixed in a base station. I'll now pause for any emergency traffic for the net before we begin. This is KB9 VBR. Not hearing any emergency or priority traffic, I'll now take check-ins for the net with uh, your call sign location and if you're portable, mobile, or fixed base station, please call Net Control KB9 VBR. KB9 VBR, this is N9 LIA, Wausau West Side Portable. KB9 VBR, this is KB9 RXA. East side of Wausau, portable. KB9 VXR. K9 QM, beautiful downtown Schofield, portable. All right, uh, checking in uh, this afternoon, we've got three stations so far, a uh, Jack N9 LIA, uh, west side of Wausau Portable, uh, KB9 RXA a Dan, east side of Wausau Portable, and uh, K9 QM Tony in Schofield Portable also. It is a beautiful sunny day here in um, north central Wisconsin, a perfect day to run this uh, simulated drill net for Severe Weather Awareness Week. If this were an actual uh, severe weather net, uh, we'd be looking for reports uh, using the um, LTCS uh, format. That's location, time, condition, and source. Uh, location is the location of the event. Uh, give you location by intersection and um, estimated distance 
of the of the severe weather event you are observing. Uh, give it. Uh, give us the time of the event. Time of the of the event may not be the actual time you're reporting it, but could be uh, a time in the past. Condition of the severe weather event itself. Uh, use some of the reportable criteria unless requested to give an observation and I'll talk about the criteria in a moment and of course the source of information the source would be uh, your call sign please do not relay uh, third-party traffic if this were an actual a severe weather net as I mentioned earlier uh, when giving a report an actual report for an actual a severe weather net uh, please use the reportable criteria unless otherwise uh, requested by the net control station uh, this reportable criteria is listed in the order of importance. Uh, tornado, funnel cloud aloft, wall clouds, indicate rotation or not, winds greater than 50 miles an hour, indicate if these wind speeds are measured or an estimated wind speed, flooding or flash flooding, hail, size of the largest stone you observe, how deep and the duration. Uh, when, when sizing the stones, please use accurate measurements. Uh, do not say marble sized hail, for example. And finally, a storm damage. Uh, if the net is an active net, storm damage can be um, just recorded and, and given to net control at a later time. Uh, the Green Bay National Weather Service may also request reports from the field that meet the reportable criteria. So uh, please uh, you know, always listen to net control operator for uh, what they are looking for uh, for reportable criteria at any given point in time. All right, I hope you found this information uh, informative and helpful in your own net control operations or being a Skywarn severe weather spotter. Of course, uh, you can find more information on my blog, www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, tons of information and resources on there for net control operations, skywarn, and severe weather spotting. So I will have this uh, video up on the blog, uh, as a blog post with plenty of links and other resources for you to check out at your leisure. So in the meantime, uh, thanks for viewing today. Have a great day. Keep watching the skies and stay safe. This is Michael, KB9VBR, signing off for another day.